Let's take a look at the role that RADIUS plays within 802.1x communications. Uh, I've used the word RADIUS quite a bit. Sometimes I'll throw the term out there, RADIUS server. And you might look all over the server room and say, where's our RADIUS server? Do we have a RADIUS server? Um, for a lot of folks, if you're doing Active Directory, and we can turn on this role called Network Policy Server. And it's going to allow us to perform 802.1x, do dynamic authorization, and so forth. Um, if you wanted to do this in an enterprise grade fashion with a lot more bells and whistles, uh, we've got the identity services engine. Now, when we talk about either of these being a radius server, it's the fact that when your credentials come in, remember you've got the supplicant connecting to perhaps a firewall, and that firewall doesn't have your user account. It's pushing it back to this AAA server. And the protocol that's going to be used there is called RADIUS. And this is something that rides on top of UDP, which rides on top of IP, which rides on top of Ethernet. And when we send EEP, for example, to that device to log in, EEP is being carried as payload. Mentioned that once before, but I'm sure not everybody remembers everything or even watches all the videos. Um, but that's a pretty good one to, to kind of understand. It's radius traffic that's moving back and forth. Um, that radius traffic isn't encrypted, so you can actually look at it with Wireshark, and you can sniff out, like we talked about AV pairs being returned, you can actually see those go by, uh, which is, I, I don't know, I think it's kind of neat to see all that stuff in action. Um, radius can provide AAA services for remote access dial-up, if you're still using that. Uh, but it kind of fell into place, didn't it? Like in the old days, you'd use a dial-up and go across PSDN to dial into the company. Um, those things are still out there, unprotected in old companies. So if you're doing security audits, don't forget to check, <laughs> make sure there's no unintended PSTN out there. Uh, but we've really replaced that. You know, we use the internet and we build a VPN uh, by just connecting to the outside interface. Um, again, whenever we do that, we've got to authenticate. So Ike version two, can leverage EEP, which is really pretty neat, just like our wired and wireless connections. So looking at this RADIUS process in a bit more detail, um, we've got a, a dial-up client in this example that's building a connection to a network access server that's a RADIUS access server, and it's relaying that information over here. So when you have a RADIUS client and a RADIUS server, um, they've got to point at one another. We'll talk about the configuration in a bit of detail, Basically, each side points to the other side's IP address, and then we set a password so that we know that it's really the other device. And that's about all that this takes to, uh, to get up and running, pretty straightforward. But the client has to know about the server, server has to know about the client. If your client has got multiple interfaces, remember that if an interface goes down, it may still be able to reach that server using a different interface, so your traffic or requests are going to come from a different IP. So a little bit of a side topic there, but you, you might want to tie that communication to a logical interface that stays up, just so that you don't get any weird issues with requests coming from a non-validated IP. Uh, anyhow, the way that this works, we basically pass the credentials back to the radio server, and I say, hey, radio server, we've got an access request. So what can come back is an accept, a reject, or a challenge. If there's a challenge, we punt that to the user, the user sends a response back, then we push that response to the server, at which point it comes to accept and reject again. What's neat about this is that when that accept comes by, assuming that we typed in our credentials appropriately, it's like accept and take these AV pairs. And that is to say authentication and authorization kind of happen in one fell swoop. When we authenticate, it goes, yes, that person's allowed in, and here's some details that go along with it. So looking at that in a bit more detail, um, you know, we looked at PPP originally. Here's that happening with an EAP. So we do our EAP login request, and we go, hey, I'd like to get on the network, and the network say, hey, who goes there? And we send back our response. That response now is going to be carried. It's radius that gets encapsulated, uh, that's carrying encapsulated EAP. And this is the payload that rides on top of our radius. We pass that back to the authentication server. It's going to accept us or send a challenge. So here comes a challenge. Challenge goes back to the user. 
user response to that challenge, this gets relayed. And again, we've got an accept or reject. And if it's an accept, it will include those AV pairs. So when we talk about attribute value pairs in 802.1x, um, for me, this was a little bit of a, like a weird and tangible topic. At the time that I was first learning about this, I think they called the class uh, like Managing Cisco Network Security is MCNS. This was way back in the day. Um, but I just hadn't really worked with these. They gave us a couple examples. They said, you can push a VLAN assignment down, but that's all that there really was. Um, what you want to remember is that when we talk about Radius and we compare it um, to TACX Plus, TACX Plus is really good for traffic that's going to the device. I say if I've got 15 different types of administrator uh, in our company because our company is so big, uh-oh, my camera is just a bit off here. Give me a second. That was no good. Sorry about that, all better. Um, looking at our radius attributes. So this is something that we return in 802.1x, but it's something that's been used for years and years and years before .1x. It was used with PPP. And it's used with other systems besides just Cisco devices. So radius can return AV pairs for all sorts of different use cases. Um, if you're studying for certification or just for your own uh, just kind of self-interest, Try doing some Google searches for custom radius AV pairs, space, crazy stuff that you can think of that would be, you know, that would exist in an enterprise network. And you'll see guides out there that talk to, talk to you about how to customize this stuff. Really pretty slick. Um, just realize that it's, it's an open standard, it's customizable, and an attribute value, it could just be like first name, Ryan, you know, state, Florida, just that's the idea of an attribute and a value. So when we talk about passing these back and forth, they're gonna be specified as TLV or type length value fields. Uh, but really it's just data and it could be almost anything that would be appropriate. So long as the client and the server support those definitions, uh, it should work just fine. I did quite a bit of work once for a university that had done tons and tons of radius work. They had their own dedicated radius developer um, just because they assigned so many attributes based on logins. Really, really neat stuff. So looking at the radius attribute values, here we are seeing it in a little bit more detail. From the user's perspective, okay, it's a network authentication, no big deal, user account test, password hard to guess. We send these credentials to our authenticator, authenticator passes them to authentication server, who says, yeah, I know that user and password. So then what we see in the access request is they're trying to access the NAS port, network access server port, gig 10 slash 11, you'll see this in your logs. And then here we see the NAS identifier is switch A. See how this is like attribute five, attribute 32. It's just an attribute and a value. What's the attribute? The NAS port. What's the value? Gig Ethernet 11. And we take a look at these uh, attributes and values again. What's the tunnel type? VLAN. What's the medium type? 802. What's the private group ID? Project. So these are just examples of AV pairings, and there's tons and tons of them out there. 